every content creator's greatest fear is falling off. And to be scared of it is like being scared of death. Like, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Lots of people are scared of that, but also it's still inevitable and you're still gonna die. To fall off is to lose relevancy or to stop trending or not just a plateau, but actually see your numbers start to go the opposite direction, probably for the first time. In the same way, we pretty much always know why a person dies. You can also know exactly why a channel died but it doesn't stop it from happening. I would say I fell off kind of hard recently. Now, there's people that have fell off way harder, but also I couldn't fall from very high in the first place. Like, yeah, a half a million subs, 100 million views. It sounds like a lot, but there are just on YouTube, 62,000 creators with bigger followings than I have right now. Being a full-time content creator is oddly similar to being a professional athlete of all things. It's, I didn't come up with this analogy, but it makes perfect sense. You invest all your time and energy and even your money into your sport or whatever you're doing. You build and build all these skills and eventually with the right amount of luck, you get the opportunity to actually go professional with it. Your career then lasts about five years on average, and then that's it. Then it, it's just over after that. <laughs> when it comes to a sport, you're getting older, you're getting tired, you can't work as hard, you can't train as much, you get injured more easily. Younger and better athletes begin to overtake you in the already limited spotlight, and you just can't keep up, so you begin to fade into irrelevancy. On a social platform, you're getting older, you're getting tired, you can't work as hard, and you burn out a lot more easily. Younger, better content creators begin to take the already limited spotlight that you're basically fighting for, and you begin to fade into irrelevancy. It's like the same thing. So when it comes to YouTube, individual viewers change like interests and channels all the time. I mean, I've cycled through literally hundreds of channels in my over decade of just watching YouTube every day. But when it comes to an overall just kind of collective audience, they, they don't really just disappear over time because people are coming and going from the community and really the whole audience begins to disappear for very few reasons. The first is that you just stop uploading. The second is the content you are making as part of a larger trend that you can't control. So maybe you came up just with like Among Us or something and then the game's not as popular or for, I mean, Fortnite's still popular, but you get the idea. You, you come up because of a trend and then the trend starts to die itself. But the two biggest reasons are your content becomes too repetitive and too similar. It's, it's too, like it's too predictable or your content becomes too different and too unpredictable. So you have to constantly follow this line where you're always improving and always changing, but just enough to where it still it still fits the niche you're in and it still interests your audience, but it can't be too similar to the last thing. And you have to do this basically every day. And there's not really an end in sight. And usually people are able to keep this going for about five years. So to have YouTube as a job, you need a formula for your videos. Now developing this formula usually takes a while. It can take easily a decade, even if you're working on it every day, just to find your formula. So we're not gonna talk about how to find the formula because that's like a whole separate, that's like a 10 hour video probably. So we're gonna quickly talk about maintaining the formula. You post videos within your niche on a usual basis where over time, the videos improve and change just enough to keep people interested, but not so much to, to where it's too different. And even if you do this perfect formula for the rest of your life, it is still simply a race of whether you or your audience gets tired of it first. Because no matter how perfect that formula is, one of you are gonna get sick of it, if not both, and it's usually within five years. Now, knowing what to do is very different than actually being able to do it. And you just get to the point, maybe I'm projecting here, but you get to the point, or you just can't do it anymore. You become bored, you're frustrated, you feel rushed and you aren't proud of the content because you have to keep up this consistent schedule, whether that's daily, weekly, monthly. Some channels literally do a couple times a year and still struggle to keep up because their production quality is just so high. But for most people, you gotta upload you know, like a couple times a week, at least a few times a month. And think of like a TV show. It's pretty much the same thing. There's different seasons, there's different episodes, but you can always identify the show. No matter what season or episode you jump into, you recognize the core characters and there's usually a similar idea. At least it takes place within like the same world or universe or whatever, but each season, ideally gets better, it doesn't always, but each season will be an improvement and a change, but not too much of a change. But there's one kind of big key difference that I really never thought about until being deep into YouTube. There's seasons. 
and there's breaks between the seasons. On YouTube, you don't get seasons and you don't get breaks. Now, some creators like PewDiePie, he takes the entirety of January off. I mean, now he's like basically retired. He just uploads whenever he wants and he goes weeks without uploading. I think Good Mythical Morning does an actual season-based thing where they just don't upload for maybe December or something. But for the far majority of YouTubers, it's a daily, weekly, or monthly upload for it in perpetuity it just doesn't end and something i've heard a lot of other creators say which like is totally accurate is you don't get a chance to enjoy what you made because the moment you before you even finish one you're already working on pumping out the other uh so yeah it goes up there's no relief because you just have to move on to the next one as soon as possible and you have to keep that going <laughs> literally just forever until you until either you or your channel dies luckily normally channels die before the people which i guess is good Anyway, this isn't part of my outline. Uh, moving on to what I actually wrote down on my paper. I hit that point in, tw I'm literally just reading off a of paper now. So anyway, I hit this point in about 2020, which is where I started to get kind of sick of it. Now I started uploading on YouTube around 2010 on different channels. This channel I started in 2012. And I would say that this channel hit its like pro, his professional career beginning uh, like right at the start of 2018, like late 2017, early 2018. And hey, what do you know? As of right now, it's been five years. Now, from a personal perspective, yeah, it was like 2020, which was about three years in that I personally hit the point where I was feeling the good old burnout that everyone talks about every single day. And I was getting sick of it. And I was complaining to everyone around me. And I finally admitted this publicly in a video called why I'm downsizing my reptiles. So obviously most of you are here for reptiles and reptile content, but thankfully my other content also seems to do pretty well. I will admit I have gotten more bored of some of my personal animals. I have rehomed a few, but what I hated, it, it took me all to admit this to myself, but I might as well admit it on camera, is when I think about reptiles not being the main thing I do, I get that excited stomach drop and it's depressing but it is true and the growth on the channel is phenomenal right now and i don't want to throttle that but i think it will naturally start being throttled if i don't slightly pivot my um content to what i still want to make and what i find interesting i will probably still so, have at least 50 percent of the content to be reptile related so in the video i announced that i'm going to begin transitioning the channel to non-reptile content. First, I would keep it at 50-50, 50% reptile related, 50% not, and I would gradually phase out the reptile videos altogether. Now, the response to the video was actually really nice, and and but also it's kind of like, you say you're gonna sell a product and everyone's like, oh, I'll, I'll totally buy that when you come out with it. And then nobody buys it when you actually come out with it. It was kind of like that. Like, yeah, people liked the idea of still watching or whatever, but I kind of mistakenly believed that the audience would was watching purely because of me and not because of the, the niche that I was in. And that's because, okay, A, it's true. There's people that I watch. Most of the people I watch, I do watch for the person. No matter what random junk they upload, I watch it because I like watching them. For mo And that's probably true for a lot of, well, okay, basically anyone watching this video in particular, it's safe to assume that's true for you. But it's just simply a lie to tell yourself that this is true for your entire audience. And for most channels, it's probably like 90% plus watch not for the person, but for the content or the niche that they're in, basically. The other reason I thought this is because I had done some random videos recently and they did amazingly like 50, 100,000, 200,000 plus views on random videos, which I, I still thought they were fine videos. It's not like the quality went down compared to my others. It just wasn't reptile related at all. But from the point of uploading this other video where I said I'm going to start transitioning my channel away from reptiles, every time I tried something unrelated, it just completely flopped. And now, flopping is relative. Uh, this is when I was uploading unboxing videos that were getting a million plus per video. And a flop would be like 50,000 views or less. Now, if I hit 50,000, it's like, holy, oh, whoa, look at that. Look at all those views, baby. But yeah, basically I would have this relative flop and I would panic and go back to just reptile stuff for a while. They'd be doing fine. I try something random, it flops again. I even tried remaking some like part twos or updated versions of previous videos that did amazing random videos. Like I did a Lego building video, it did phenomenal. I did a new Lego building video, it kind of flopped. I did a online quiz video, fruits and veggies quiz, if anyone remembers that, it did great. People People loved it. I did an updated one. It flopped. It's because my the hype around my channel from the unboxings was starting to fade, including the unboxing videos themselves. 
first one got like a million, then like two million, then two million. They, they got millions and then they started dropping back to a million and then into the hundreds of thousands, which is still insane. But also you have to think of all of this relatively to each other. And it was clearly a downwards trend. And the unboxing videos were certainly a formula that I think I could have kept going if it was a successful formula, but it wasn't because it was not sustainable and your video formula has to be sustainable. And it's not the only formula I've had. More recent ones include the Reddit formula, the Rating Your Reptiles formula, the Reading Your Comments formula. And most of these are based on other creators uh, like series that they've made. I just made it kind of reptile related. But yeah, the unboxing formula simply was not a sustainable formula because believe it or not, every time I would do an unboxing video, I suddenly have 20 new reptiles. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, there's only so many I can have at one time. When compared to a Reddit video, I just delete, I just, I close the tabs. I bookmark a bunch of tabs, I delete the tabs. I can't bookmark and delete the reptiles. They're here, they're stuck with me, which is why it was not sustainable. And so as the unboxing videos gradually became less common, then so did people coming back to watch random junk on my channel. Now I've changed uh, niches all the t so many times, but this was before I ever got any relevancy or any popularity. As a lot of you know, I've done everything from Lego videos to Minecraft and other gaming videos. I've done sports stacking. I did skits when I was a kid. I tried commentary. I had done podcasts. And even this channel itself, it didn't start with reptiles. I used it as a way to host videos for my nature blog about North Carolina nature. And when I go outside and make videos, I'd often find reptiles, which is how I got into herping. And so I made herping videos for quite a while. That's why I rebranded to go herping. I got sick of herping and it didn't really matter because nobody really watched the herping videos. And when I say nobody, again, it's relative. There were thousands of people, a few thousand, tuning in for the herping videos. And when I stopped, it was no biggie because I didn't really have an audience for it. Then I switched to reptile keeping and then I switched to uh, the reptile rehoming stuff like Emerald Scales. And so as I got sick of each thing, I would just stop. I, I, I become hyper obsessive over an interest and then I just crash hard and I hate it and I never want to look at it again. I, I don't really hate them. Like I still like Lego and I still like Minecraft, but if I had to make Lego and Minecraft videos every week, I would be truly hating my life. And that's kind of what happened with the reptiles themselves. I fell out of the interest kind of years ago. I, I mean, as far back as 2018, I got sick of caring for reptiles. That's why I started outsourcing it and I had other people do it and I would just pay them to do it. But then I kind of lost interest in keeping personal animals and then I lost interest in rehoming animals. And then here we are now where I just don't have an interest in reptiles. And you're so sick of hearing about this, but don't worry because I am not gonna talk about it anymore after uh, this month. So <laughs> don't worry about it. It'll, it'll become a thing of the past, which also will probably, I guess that kind of upsets some people. Anyway. My channel fell off. What was this about? My channel dead. Dead. Uh, no views on my videos. No. Which is, it's not like it's their fault. It's not their fault that they don't want to watch something. It's their time that they're investing into the videos. And I, it's the same thing. I unsubscribe from channels frequently too. I'm not blaming anyone for unsubscribing. Uh, you don't have to announce, it's, it's not an airport. You don't have to announce your departure. I always think that's a funny comment. <laughs> Anyway, channel dead. I, I keep forgetting when I'm, I, I'm done with my outline. I, I didn't write anything else. I fell asleep while writing this outline. But does it really matter? Like those of you watching this, apparently you'll just watch anything. <laughs> yeah, so the, the reason I can't really be that upset about falling off is because like I would be upset if, um, if I was continuing the same reptile series and reptile like meet this new reptile, unboxing video, shipping this reptile, rehabbing this reptile. If I was still doing those and I was still loving it and still my engagement with my audience is as bad as it is right now, I'd be super upset. But I already got so sick of all that, that it's okay. Well, I could go back to doing that and the views would probably come back up. But also I just can't do it, man. The best, ex I talk about Andrew Hales a lot on this channel because I I've looked up to him a lot as a creator, but also I feel like we're pretty dang similar in many ways. And he described it the best. I think it was a live stream he was doing. Someone asked like, why don't you just go back to the videos you were making that were getting tons of views? And his, he just, I just, I don't have it in me, I think is what he said, or I, I just can't, I can't find the exact stream. I, it might be unlisted where he um, said that, but long story short, it, it's hard to describe it. You just can't do it. It's just not in you. It's just, I don't know how to describe it. You just, you can't do it. It's like, truly your fuel is, your fuel tank is empty. You've burnt out. You've run out of energy. You just can't do it. And uh, it, it's, it's really something that you just don't understand, man. It's such a unique feeling. It's the feeling of just, Nope. Uh, most of you have probably felt some sort of burnout in some fashion. If any of you have a job, <laughs> you've, you've probably felt it, and no matter how much you loved your job or whatever. But um, 
Yeah. Uh, Emerald Scales is, I'm shutting down Emerald Scales uh, once the last few animals sell. So if you want one, it's emeraldscales.com. There's four left as of recording. Once they sell, the site's going down and that'll be its own video. So I got a job. It's with this company called Amazon. <laughs> like Andrew Hales, I got a job, a real job, uh, part-time. It, which means I'm essentially going from full-time YouTuber after five years. W what do you know? Five-year full-time career? It's, it's almost like it's true. Uh, to part-time YouTuber and part-time other job. Uh, this job, I've already told a lot of you. If you've been on streams, you know what it is. But that'll be the next video. It won't be forever, hopefully. <laughs> I hope it's not forever. But yeah, I actually started it a few months ago and uh, it's been a great way to take a break, get to reevaluate and not rely entirely financially because YouTube, it's it's much more fun as a hobby. Same with keeping reptiles. If you like reptiles, don't make it your job. You're going to hate reptiles. And if you like YouTube, I'm not saying don't make it your job, but I'm just saying that you will 100% enjoy it much more now as a hobbyist YouTuber than you will full time. Um, yeah, the, the money's fun. I enjoy the money. There's not much of it right now. I enjoyed the money. The money's gone. <laughs> yeah, you, you give and take. You're going to lose passion. You're going to make money. You just can't enjoy it. I don't think most people can enjoy their job because it becomes a job. It be, it, it, other things come along with it. That's a whole separate... Yeah. Anyway, my channel dead. Thank you for watching. I still really like YouTube. I just can't make what I was making. So, uh, I'm... Yeah, I'm done with reptile content after this year, probably. I'll make a few more. I'll probably do them all just right now so I can get them over with. Thanks to everyone who's supporting me on like Patreon. I mostly do the channel memberships now. It's $1.99 if you want. Uh, I get, well, your money tra trade offer. I get $1.99. You get um, these things that you can see here if you want them. You get, you get my artificial love. But yeah, uh, falling off, it's actually, you know, it's not too bad. I survived. I mean, maybe I'll like... <laughs> I say that and then I like end up living on the streets or something. There's so much else I could have talked about. I could have talked about this for hours, but nobody cares. If you want to hear me talk about it for hours, just join the live stream and ask me about burnout or whatever, and I'll go on for hours. Uh, okay, that's it, I guess. I don't know. This is too long. I'll d yeah, maybe I'll do a second. Okay, bye.